Welcome to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we're here to talk about what goes on in the village, the township. You know those government people that make laws and regulations that affect you out there. That's right, Elgin. And whether you live in the village of Oxford, the village of Leonard, Addison Township, or Oxford Township, these are the people that you went and elected. And the commissions and the committees that make decisions whether you went to those meetings or not. And whether you did or didn't, doesn't make any difference because you could end up with a taxing situation. You could, <laughs> or hey, you could find a lot of humor in this down the line. You betcha. That you weren't expecting, right? You bet. <laughs> Another thing that we do here is uh, we have uh, one of us who spreads rumors. <laughs> so you want to be careful and really uh, <laughs> listen to what we're talking about here. Uh, good um, thing that we have going here is the fact that you, if you didn't attend those meetings, we give you kind of our outlook on uh, how these meetings went down. Hmm? What do you think? So, <laughs> yes. Pre prepare to summarize. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's uh, get involved with a couple of meetings that uh, occurred actually the same evening. It was September 20th. And the first one is uh, Oxford Township Special Meeting of Trustees. Uh -huh. And the other one is the Pollyann Trail Management Council Meeting that was held at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon on that same day. Okay. Special meeting. That's usually a one subject. Once pony, isn't yeah, it? it usually is. But there were people that spoke at this one that uh, kind of livened it up a bit because oh. <laughs> the whole topic of that special meeting was, uh, can you say budgets? Ooh, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> really exciting. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was exciting to the people on the board because uh, they're spending your money, <laughs> and uh, the people on that board uh, for the Oxford Township is William Dunn, who is a supervisor of the township, and he serves as the chair. Uh, Joe Ferrari, who is the treasurer, Curtis Wright, who is the clerk, uh, Jack Curtis is on that board as a trustee, Marjorie Payne, Patty Durr, and you're going to point at me. Yes, <laughs> I'm on that board too. <clears throat> so I get to make fun of myself on, on this board if I can. If I don't, he probably will. I can pretty much count on him. Just give me a lead. <laughs> All right, got it. Okay, so first thing they did is uh, the pre preliminaries and uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, and they called, made a call to the public for non-agenda items. And um, let me see what came up. Oh, yes, non-agenda items. 2019 M24 uh, road work was the subject. Who presented and, that? Well, Sue Basardit, who's the um, pr president of the uh, Village Council, Oh. was there and also Evan Teach who's the acting village manager right. was there as well and they gave kind of an overview of uh, what you folks can expect on, on uh, Lapeer Road you know when this thing starts to be torn up <clears throat> uh, in 2019 in 2019 um, uh, Suba started mentioned that she's a member of the task force for M24 <clears throat> task Force, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice here. You, if you find it, send it back, will you? Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, and she is on the task force, and there's roughly 18 people on this board, consisting of business people and um, administrative people, you know, for the village and for the township. Not only this township, but also for probably uh, no, Lake Orion, no, too. It's no, it's just our township. Just ours. There, okay. Yeah. Uh, so for, it's not just an M24, it's yeah. not a wide. M24 thing, it's a right. specific to the village of Oxford. Right, it is. And for the township, actually, where it comes in, you know, yeah. they're going to certainly be involved in it. Uh, no traffic problems at all, folks. Yeah, right, no traffic. <laughs> That's because there's going to be no traffic. <laughs> no, there's going to be some traffic because they're going to run it through I'm the sure, fields. I'm sure they'll control it. Right, but. they will. Well, I said a number of uh, people on this board, uh, not necessarily all of them um, as far as business owners for downtown, Pete Schultz, for example, serves on this board, and she, he's the fire chief. Mm -hmm. And uh, the police chief uh, for Oxford, um, Mr. Sowald, he serves on it as well. They're all going to have to be involved. They are. So anyway, she uh, just made a note of uh, some of the people that served on the board on this committee. Uh, they're working with MDOT out of Pontiac, so they've attended a number of meetings there. Not all the people, but many of the representatives of this particular task force. Evan Teach um, took to the podium then, and he said that uh, um, as acting village manager, he wanted people to know that uh, 
they, that he wanted to review the whole scope of what was going to happen. And he said that there's going to be brand spanking new sidewalks as well as streets, and and uh, MDOT is going to tear everything up all the way to the buildings. To the building. To the building. So that gonna, means involvement with the infrastructure too. It's a, well, sewers and yep. oh, yes. all those wonderful things that go underneath the roads and sidewalks. And <laughs> it's funny you bring that up because you know uh, I think there's a major uh, pipeline that's running down the side of the street. I think on the west side of the street. Sewer or water? Uh, uh, both sewer and water lines but the sewer line that was run hopefully separate yeah the sewer line i think was put in <laughs> at yeah <laughs> well they filter it out my, no, i think no, so Ew. but anyway uh no this sewer line or this uh, particular pipe that was put in was actually put in i think the turn of the century so it's, they want Which to change one? it this century <laughs> <laughs> no maybe last no, century maybe that one <laughs> if it was this century it's only about 17 years old that's true close enough no, mm -hmm. no, it was around 1910, I think, in that era. That other so, century. That other century, that one. <laughs> now, you probably remember it, but most of us don't. Vaguely. So. <laughs> Vaguely? Okay. Anyway, that being said, he said that they're going to replace, of course, the curbs and everything, and uh, uh, they're going to rework um, um, with uh, this, with the grant monies that are going to be provided, which are going after grants. How about parking? Uh, parking is a consideration also, because there will be none. <laughs> <laughs> now, there will be parking, but uh, they're going to provide signage, you know, so that uh, people can find their ways ar way around to get to the businesses. Uh, of course, we, we're fortunate in the fact we have parking in the back of these business buildings downtown. It's good. And um, Are they going to have public uh, hearings on these things? They will have public hearings as they move along. Uh, actually, MDOT will be giving um, uh, presentations, I think, of what you call a hearing. Uh, as they get closer. They're just trying to handle the preliminaries at this point. Okay. And there's some really interesting things that they're looking at, not only trees that they're going to put in, but furniture, benches, that kind of thing, uh, that they're looking to improve and, and some uh, flowers, uh, what are they call uh, annuals, that it, they bloom every year, that kind that of thing. That would be perennial. Perennial, one of those guys. Yeah. Yep. We're gonna put some, <laughs> gonna put some of those in, and I think uh, annuals you plant them every year. Yeah, those guys, <laughs> annuals. Yeah, pre annuals, pre annuals you call? Perennial. Perennial. Okay, close enough. Anyway, that's what it is. They're gonna put those in, and uh, they're gonna, as far as the intersection is gonna have um, uh, some designated walk areas highlighted mm -hmm. so that you can see them. Uh, here comes a car. Whoops. Uh, anyway, uh, there's going to be an island, I think a couple of uh, small islands on each end. Um, uh, called rescue islands. Rescue islands, where people, if they're trying to make it across, and all of a sudden the light changes. You ever, re ever run into that, where the light changes, you're caught in the middle? What do you do? Run, run back? <laughs> Turn back the other way or run across the street? No, if you go the other way, it means you have to stop and turn around. You keep going. <laughs> keep going. Okay. I hope you check for traffic in lieu of that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Watch for those little white walking guys on the signs. Yeah, the little walking guys. Where are they walking to, by the way? <laughs> away. Do they show them running, then you run, right? Okay. With that, we'll run. be back <laughs> run right forest, after this. Run. <laughs> run. <laughs> run, forest, run. Yep. <laughs> Miss by Miss, I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we are talking about what's going to go on in downtown uh, in the year 2019. There's going to be a new road in town. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> Evan uh, Teach, who is the acting village manager, gave the presentation before the township. Uh, 
uh, trustees board. And he said that, uh, uh, let me see, I'm, I'm thinking those pedestrian uh, crosswalks that they're concerned with is on First Street and on Washington and Burdick Street. Well, they have these little push button things on poles that mm -hmm. will activate lights. Right. Or, now, or now on First Street, you just take your chances. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's what a lot of people do, and you know, hey, funeral homes keep pretty busy that way. Well, uh, First a lot Street, of jaywalkers. <laughs> First Street, I think they're going to have um, alert signals that will flash. And how that's going to work, I don't exactly alert. know yet. They alert. What? The, what the, who do they alert? <laughs> they alert the drivers to be cautious. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> that people are attempting to cross the street at that point. I think that's what they're going to have. You've got a runner here. They got a runner. <laughs> right. So you have to move faster if you're going to catch that runner. Anyway, <laughs> um, they are so also talking about uh, lighting, uh, lighting, better lighting, and they're going to run the lighting all the way down the district. Better lighting? Oh, I thought they just installed the lighting only well, recently. Well, they replaced uh, some lighting as poles that were bad yeah. in the past. Because they had um, galvanized anchors, but they went from incandescent to LEDs. LEDs, didn't they? yeah, and they can replace them on the existing poles. Okay, and they were doing them one by one as they went along, um, but uh, they're going to actually stretch the poles, add new poles, and go the length of the of the uh, business district, oh. which extends. But uh, are they, south are they of planning town. on changing the type of LED? Or no, it'll it'll they'll be LEDs. Um, but in order to accommodate the additional lighting, they'll probably have to put in an additional transformer, more than likely, somewhere okay. along the line. Right. But that's all under the engineering. Well. And by the way, uh, Jim Sharp, who uh, is the engineer for the township, has been working uh, with the task force also, providing some input information. So doing a great job out there. All, the, all these little bricks are getting yep. put in place. And once all the little bricks are in place, then you folks out there, you know, you're going to be aware of what the recommendations are and so forth. And you'll be able to voice your opinion. I don't yep. like the color of that brick. Right. <laughs> uh, they're going to get grants. I think the total of uh, cost of what uh, this project is going to cost for the streetscape is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of about 1.12 million. Mm. It started out at 1.7. So, you know, they said, no, that's not going to work. So they've been beating this to death uh, to the point where they've got it down now where they feel they can handle the, the finances of it. Have they determined so, they're going to go right up to the building, which means they're going to get rid mm -hmm. of the sidewalk. Is yes. the sidewalk that's going to replace the sidewalk going to be narrower? No. It, it isn't? Won't, no, it won't be narrower. What they're going to do is uh, get rid what of the proposal parking. is <laughs> <laughs> get rid of the parking. Uh, well, they'll probably get rid of the parking in front of the park because that's pretty useless. Uh, did you ever park along where the Centennial Park is at and try to get out of your car? Whoops, there goes my door. Well, that's pretty much true right along Washington yeah, Street. But they have it planned out through MDOT. I understand that uh, some of the lanes are going to be only 10 feet wide rather than, you know, standard, what, 14, 17 wide? So, okay. So, um, and I think they're talking about maybe controlling the trucking that way, that the trucks will travel a certain lane to keep down the noise as opposed to they can travel on any lane right now through town. Hmm. So... Uh, but those are all under consideration at this point. They're going to, the trees and everything that you see there, MDOT will probably take them all out, wipe them out, because it's easier for them to do that and less expensive. And then they'll replant trees that are going to be survival smaller. trees. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'll be smaller? I wonder if they'll be smaller. <laughs> at first. <laughs> yeah, little miniature trees. No, they're going to be uh, <laughs> taller trees, but uh, they're going to well, be the type that's going to be We, we shouldn't survivable. really laugh at this because, you know, they're very serious about making these plans, and uh -huh. they're going to try to make it work for everyone. Right, and one of us is laughing at it. <laughs> Just so you folks out there understand this. Uh, this could be one of those things where the sense of humor might get you. But I don't think so. I think they're doing a, gr a great job of so far uh, trying to first find a way to finance this major project that's coming up the line here. Uh, because if they don't do it now and they decide not to do it, be happy with with what you have. Do they think they'll have change. to change? Do they think they have to float a bond to cover any extra expense? No, bonding uh, is not under consideration at this time. And the reason for that, I think, is because bonds should be used for uh, infrastructure, for uh, streets that need to be repaired on uh, 
and the subdivisions, that kind of thing. How about sewers and water lines that need to be replaced? Uh, that would be under consideration there as well. <laughs> hmm. Although there is a sewer fund, you know, oh, for that. Okay. So that's that's allocated funding for that. So anyway, actually the sewer fund is pretty solid. <laughs> okay. I won't even go humor. there. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's. It's. Uh, <laughs> I could have said it's liquid, but it's, <laughs> it's solid anyway. <laughs> Let's get off that one, shall we? Uh, anyway, Bill Dunn he made the comment, supervisor. He said that he felt that a strong downtown uh, was definitely necessary. Uh, it affects the township as well. Uh, you want a viable um, business district. I'm sure the DDA is involved. <laughs> uh, DDA is definitely involved, and that's part of the. The M24 group right, that's right. involved in this. Um, township, he said, has been generous in the past in providing uh, funds, that kind of thing, for the fire department and so forth. He, and he, he said that he felt that there should be some way that perhaps he felt, at least, that something could be done, you know, to assist, you know, on this uh, project that the village is undertaking because it's a major financial um, undertaking, as you well know out there. The village isn't the strongest in terms of uh, financial positions. Um, so anyway, Jack Curtis says, well, he, uh, he's concerned about the safety paths that the township is putting in, and he wants these to match up with the village. So if there were something that we'd do, there would probably be some wants that the township would, would introduce you know, to this scenario. As in where safety paths mm -hmm. uh, cross well, or he, merge with the uh, sidewalks. <laughs> right. Well, here's the thing. He said, I don't want the safety paths to all of a sudden abruptly end and nowhere to go because the village hasn't connected with them, you know, in a, in a way. So his point's well taken because well, actually uh, Evan Teach said, well, it behooves the village to have a bicycle traffic and foot traffic to go into the village to shop the uh, various uh, businesses that are there. So. Uh, certainly, he said that would be a, a consideration down the line to How be able to make those connections. Skateboards <laughs> are kind of a, a hot topic. Down I know. There. <laughs> They're not too hot, happy so far with uh, skateboards. <laughs> and they, they question bicycles downtown, too. But they said people get off their bikes and they walk along. They don't ride the bikes you know, on the sidewalk. But they're, they're going to be a sound deadening um, greenery along the, the way. Uh, and at nighttime, they're looking at actually a type of light that could be dispersed that will give a, a kind of a, a soothing feeling uh, throughout the village um, in the business district. Is this a pacification effort? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, a lot of things going on. And um, so stay tuned. I think there will be an, uh, a number of articles coming up. Uh, I'm sure they'll be written in the Leader newspaper as well. So you know, folks don't have a copy of the Leader, pick it up. So that would be my outtake on the M24 project. And so they requested if there's any way that, that the township could assist uh, to provide some kind of funding, then you know they would appreciate it. And this will not be the last you hear of it. That will not. Now, Joe Ferrari said, I don't think you can do this because it's illegal according to state law. Do yet, what? To provide funds to the village and oh. actual money. And you know what? But the village is part of the township. That's right. But you know what? He's right. You can't. There's a law in the state of Michigan that you cannot do that because they're separate governments. How about that one, huh? And that's the truth, folks. <laughs> we'll be back. I would think that that would more apply to a city rather than a nope. village. No. Wrong. Oh, wow. <laughs> All right. Well, then we'll be back, folks, right after this. <laughs> Canines Free Rescue does just that. Rescue stray dogs for new families. But they need your help. Become a volunteer at Canine Stray Rescue League of Michigan. Take dogs for walks, help them socialize with others, and help them get adopted. Fill out an application and help a family add a new member today.
Welcome back to Minutes by Minutes. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. And we have been talking about Oxford Township special meeting. Special meeting. Yep. Roads, roads, roads. <laughs> and the rest of the meeting wasn't that really interesting because it involved approval of the budgets. And if you folks want to see more, go to OCCTV.org and click on programs and you should be able to find the meeting out there for the township special meeting. Ta-da. Ta-da. Okay. Let's talk about the Pollyann Trail Management Council. On that board, uh, we have Mike McDonald, who's the chairperson. Uh, Curtis Wright serves on that board as a vice chair. Uh, Sue Basardit um, was filling in as a substitute. Uh, Donnie Steele from uh, Orion Township. Bruce Pearson from Addison Township, supervisor. Myself and Kevin Green, who is a resident, who sits on that board. Okay, they did the pledge. They did an invocation. Donnie Steele did that. And the agenda with uh, Curtis uh, Road was under discussion, uh, part of the agenda to add Curtis Road to the, to the agenda. It was approved. Bills, $8,448.14. Again, get out your checkbook, 14 cents. Gotta maintain the trail. <clears throat> Got it, okay. Public comment, none. Uh, Kevin Green, from, as a resident, uh, Clarkston Road Trail, he commented that uh, that connection is going great. As you know, there's and putting an addition down there for the trail, and they just wanted the the organization to know that it was great. Um, does the Pollyann Trail connect with the Paint Creek Trail yet? Yeah, uh, yeah, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, trail manager report. This is an interesting thing. Linda Moran uh, doing a great job out there, by the way, uh, as your trail manager. Um, she talked about the Leonard Water uh, fountain that was put in, and it's it's up and running and uh, trying to think of uh, the she put a plaque on it also for the people that donated it we'll talk about that a little bit later push this button push this button <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no it's a it's a volunteer oh. in oh. terms of expense and oh. who paid for it oh that's nice it's yes good these people are recognized they're good, good. volunteers absolutely uh kyle uh, fuller who's a boy scout eagle scout uh had a major project on borman road and that has been completed, and he was uh, acknowledged during this particular meeting. State Street, uh, cement uh, cloth was used. Remember, we said the cement cloth last time that they had a problem in terms of um, low level area, and it kept mm -hmm. washing away? Yeah. Well, this cement cloth apparently does a great job, and she Excellent. said it's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. So on Borman Road, we'll get back to that again because there's trespassers on Borman Road where this scout is working. And they've been a pain in the keister. How do you identify a trespasser well, on a public trail? They, <laughs> well, they spit on you. They <laughs> well, that's not a trespasser. <laughs> no, uh, they they that's violate abuse. the they violate the trail and they they put vehicles on the trail and they do oh. things that they're not supposed to be doing. Anyway, obey uh, the rules. Yeah, right. But you know, as interesting an individual that our uh, trail manager is, she uh, took cameras out there. <laughs> Uh -huh. Concealed cameras, took pictures, got them smiling and doing their nasty, and uh, then they were visited by the police department. <laughs> so it worked Those out pretty good. little deer in the headlight cameras? <laughs> yeah, right. So anyway, she's doing a great job. Uh -huh. uh, with that, uh, Lake Villa, uh, you recall that there was a situation with trespassing with a gate and a fence on, on uh, Lake Villa Road, or in, in that area, and um, not far from the gravel um, thing. Okay. Pit. And uh, he, that gentleman removed the gate, moved the fence back. So that took care of that issue. There's a, the sign on the fountain was for Lisa and Robert Katzman, who donated it. Thank you very much. Yep, great job, folks. And uh, they said, let that be a lesson. <laughs> no, in other words, anybody that wants to uh, help with the Pollyann Trail, in any way, contact uh, Linda Moran and uh, she'll be glad to uh, find a way where you can help. Like this Boy Scout has really been a great, great help oh, yeah. to the trail. And in the past they have been too. I believe, I can't recall what the troop number is, but uh, they've been pretty active with the Pollyann Trail. They were prepared. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> now they've been doing some logging in Leonard and, and she wanted them to know that that project is all done and the equipment is pulled out and they're gonna now repair the trail, you know, where they were at. Um, Borman Road Trail, again, back to that. Where's Borman Road? You know, I don't know. I really couldn't tell you, but they had a washout on Borman Road 
uh, and they, they had to be repaired and a culvert had to be put in. Well, people dug down and did their thing, and Bruce Pearson is one of them that always volunteers and jumps in there. Another one is Mike McDonald, who is the chair of the Pollyann Trail, and a fellow named Dave, uh, who is the owner of um, boulders and backhoe. He donated his time to do this, to dig the hole and help, uh, you know, put the uh, culvert in and that kind of thing. Uh, and kind of uh, reminds you of an Amish barn building, doesn't it? It, it kind of does. Just jumps Everybody in and jumps helps. in. Yeah. And anyway, um, Linda wanted to mention that this Dave is her newest best friend <laughs> because he's also, <clears throat> excuse me, volunteered uh, for Curtis Road uh, project that they're going to be working on. And he, she said that the Curtis Road project is about 100 yards long. And this guy has offered to provide a perforated mat, what she calls it, and a value of about five to $6,000 at his expense. He's going to provide it. Uh, this guy from uh, uh, Boulders and Backhoe, and uh, Dave is his wow. name, and uh, he's Good really work, yeah, he's doing a great job. Uh, but she said that they will also need some stone for that project, about six hundred ninety dollars worth. And she asked the committee or the commission to uh, provide those funds, which they did. They uh, voted for it and agreed to go forward with it, as well as a surface uh, coating of uh, stone at $35 per yard uh, and with $90 delivery fee. So that was all approved and went through. So that road is, or that uh, trail is going to be repaired, folks, Curtis Road Trail. Now, uh, Borman, they have another issue with trespassing on there, and that uh, the gentleman refuses to move his fence line continues to violate <clears throat> the uh, trail. And uh, so he's been in court and the court has actually issued two proclamations that he's got to move this fence and he just refuses it to do it. Here's where attorneys what are making a, money. What, what weight does a proclamation have? Well, it's an, it's an order. It's a court him. order. Court oh, order, okay. Yep. okay. So he, uh, he's lost twice uh, to the uh, DNR Mm -hmm. in this and guess what the DNR and their attorneys are going to go full head with him again and because he can't you know just accept that you know he's in the wrong this got to be costing him money oh yeah well the attorneys are making the money well, certainly sure. and he's showing it out so <laughs> we anyway could, we could go at this again <laughs> and I, I can tell you the DNR you don't mess with them I mean it, it's their property and you cannot be in violation there's one guy that wants to put a um, road over to his property crossing the Pollyann Trail and Linda says, "No, you can't. You can't do that. You know, it's not. It's not your property." And he says, "Well, I have the right of way from the railroad to give me." And he says, "I paid nineteen thousand dollars for the right of way." She says, "The railroad hasn't been there for years and years and years, so I don't know how that happened." And the guy ups got upset and hung the phone up. Oh. So she picks up the phone, talks to DNR. <laughs> They're now involved. So oh, boy. Uh, I think uh, if the road wasn't pre-existing, then you got no. a problem. Right. <laughs> so anyway, uh, lots of things going on with the Pollyann Trail, and Linda Moran seems to keep all these things in, in the air and juggling and doing a great job out there. Um, with that, Powell Lake is the other subject. Uh, it's come along great in, in terms of the uh, cement pad that they put down, and, and it's moving forward. So you folks will see some improvements out there as well. I want to mention one thing. Birmingham Bank uh, has a contest on, and to get a chance, you folks should go to, uh, uh, it's called Birming, B-I-R-M-I-N-G, helps, H-E-L-P-S, dot com. And you can vote for the Pollyann Trail. And so far, they're in the running for $1,500, where this bank is going to give money away, up to $75,000 they are so going to give away. Keep those cards and letters coming yes. in, folks. Yes, <laughs> get out there and check it out and vote, if you will. What's coming up? Well, we do have meetings on 10-9 at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Zoning Board of Appeals, or ZBA. And on that same day at 7 o'clock, the Village of Leonard Council. On 10-10 at 6.30 in both instances, the Village of Oxford Council and the Oxford School Board will be meeting at Oxford High School. Uh, schools of Choice, I think, is the subject. Mm -hmm. And on 10-11 at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Board of Trustees. And on 10-12. I almost 12. couldn't read my writing. <laughs> at 7 o'clock, the Oxford Township Planning Commission, and at 6 o'clock, the Addison Township Zoning Board of Appeals. I'm Elgin Nichols. And I'm Dave Kenny. Catch you next time right here on Minutes by Minute. See you then. <laughs>